Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight um, for this program. My name is Nicole Cromarty, and I'm the Director of Education and Programs here at the Clifford Still Museum. And tonight, I'm so excited to be joined by Kelly Monaco, who is a Professor of Art at the Metropolitan State University at Denver. Uh, she currently is teaching a video art class and has been working with the Clifford Still Museum and her students on doing a showing of her her students work uh, both online tonight um, and also being projected outside of the Clifford Still Museum. So we wanted to start by just asking her a couple of questions to give you a sense of what you're in store for tonight. So Kelly, I just wanted to um, welcome you and thank you so much for your collaboration on this project and see if you wouldn't mind sharing kind of what this project is about, what these students are responding to. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks for having me. We're all very excited to be contributing to this uh, collaboration. So as we know, there is a uh, pandemic. It's still happening, but um, we've all experienced it. We've all been going through it for over a year now. But I just read that now 55% of Americans have at least one of their vaccinations. And as I, as I read that today, I was reminded of like how things are changing and how things are changing sort of quickly at this point. Um, and I really felt like as artists, it's our responsibility to, to capture how um, certain events impact society. So how this pandemic has impacted um, society. And I thought it would be really interesting for students to sort of catalog and um, create a video that reflected their experience of the pandemic. The pandemic impacted everyone, right? There's not a single, a single person where it didn't have some sort of impact. And this was really clear in some of the artworks that were created by this group of students. Um, and although their approach was really different, many of the students I noticed used news footage um, or the audio from news um, throughout the year as an element within their video work. And it really made me realize how we're all glued, how we were all glued to the media during this pandemic. We were just waiting for the next little nugget of information to help us sort of solve the riddle. What is this thing? Um, what are we allowed to do? And some students chose to record and document their surroundings. Um, others wanted to reveal these underlying truths of what life means through this, you know, because of this pandemic. Uh, others videos um, sort of created perspective about how this pandemic has shaped our um, society moving forward. And what was really interesting to me is that although this class is online, uh, where I never really got to verbally interact with my students, I thought that this was so interesting and it, and it was successful, it worked. But in, in the same sense, it also added to this isolation that we had felt. So we've always hosted film still in theater spaces. And since the pandemic, um, Lares Feliciano, you know, a Denver-based artist had this fabulous idea to, as another way to really bring community into this program was to project film still onto the outside of our building while also doing a virtual showing. So allowing um, community to participate in whatever way they felt comfortable. Um, and while creating a safe environment for film screenings to continue to happen. So contemplating a post-pandemic world, isolation versus connection with Metropolitan State University of Denver is really the second iteration of us thinking about film still in a totally new context and thinking about what film still looks like, you know, in this pandemic world. And so I wonder how this collaboration has really maybe shaped your students' ideas about the project, knowing that they their work would be at the Clifford Still Museum. As far as them creating this work, I think the format changes. There's a couple things that, that changed, that I noticed changed what they created, and it was the format to know that it was being uh, projected at a, at a large scale. Um, I think they were thinking more like contrast and what would translate um, audio to. I think we, in our critiques, we went back through audio, like that may not translate in that format. Um, but also like to show at the Clifford Still, they were there was a sense of accountability where 
some of them did freeze with nervousness. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they get paralyzed with, because it's like, oh, Oh, I, other, like many people might see this and that makes them more accountable and then they become paralyzed, but then they rise. They, I think they all did a great job of sort of rising to the occasion of being able to show their work there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then adding on to that one interesting little tidbit is that this is the first, this is the first public event that we're promoting for students to attend since the pandemic. So it's sort of like this, it's kind of coming full circle where even though it's like, you know, we're all going to be six feet away, but it's the first thing that we promoted that hasn't been virtual in over a year. Wow. Which is really exciting. And to gauge students response if they're like, whoa, or they're like, yeah, you know, I think it ties right. back into the theme of the, of the, the prompt of the project. Kelly, I think we've all been thinking more about video as a medium as we've all been spending a lot of time on screens over the past year. So I wanted to get your perspective on why do you think um, video art is such a relevant medium in this moment in time? One thing I really like about video art is that it's it's the artists, it's artists who are exploring like the newest technologies and, and video art allows them to in a way simulate those technologies. It's like these way to catalog and record the, the time-based experiences that the pandemic has presented to us. Video art has this long intertwined relationship with performance art, and this was a really great media for these students to story tell this unique experience that represents this collective remembrance. All right, well, Kelly, thank you so much for joining us tonight and for collaborating with us on this project. We're all so excited to see what your students have come up with. So let's go ahead and start the show. the latest in Colorado's first presumed positive case of coronavirus. Today, Colorado saw its largest jump in coronavirus cases in a single day since the end of April. The state reports 666 new cases in the past 24 hours. The numbers aren't good. Our statewide case count sits above 79,000 after more than 575 cases today. We added another 1,500 new cases just today. Another record tonight, 894 people are in the hospital with confirmed coronavirus cases. 122 others have COVID symptoms, and that means more than 1,000 ICU beds are in use. That's halfway to our capacity. Standing in the booth at this point, this is special. This is rock in this place right now. You show up here, you feel it. It's an exciting time. Players love it, and I know the fans do. This past year and a half 
was a struggle for many of us, both physically and mentally as individuals. We have learned how to cope with all the emptiness the pandemic has brought upon us. The closing of many things such as amusement parks, restaurants, and even entertainment. It's been very strange and difficult to see how the world has came to be because of the pandemic, but we have all powered through the emptiness, this new world we live in, and we are slowly seeing it come back to place. It's important we know how far we have come and have an appreciation for what we have around us because it doesn't last forever. Nature and our very own lives, friends and family included, is what we should have an appreciation for. And we must all rise like the sun does every morning and keep moving forward. Hello? Hello?
I'm just like, there's so much stuff to do that I just don't even know when I'm going to be able to fix all of that before I have to turn it in. And you know what's crazy? Is it's like, I just have so much stuff to do that I just don't even know how I'm going to handle all of it in the next couple weeks, you know? There's just so much stuff that I, you know, there's some days I feel like I just can't do everything, you know? cares. <laughs> March 21st, 2020. We have all been sent home from work and we won't be returning until April. March 24th, 2020. Everyone in my family is at home now. We're all working on a big puzzle together. March 25th, 2020. Gabby and I made lemon cookies together. March 28th, 2020. All of my college classes are virtual now. I'm still adjusting. May 28th, 2020. I made a donation of $20 to the Minnesota Freedom Fund. July 31st, 2020. I was laid off from my job. October 11th, 2020. After being unemployed for two months, I finally got a job. It's not full time, but it's at the art museum, and I'm excited. November 16th, 2020. My dog Coco has died. December 20th, 2020. I switched jobs, and I already hate it, but I can't quit because it was hard enough getting hired. A dangerous virus is spreading rapidly in China and U.S. officials are very worried that it could come here. The coronavirus now has one in four Americans living in lockdown. Every American has a role to play in defending our nation from this invisible, horrible enemy. So we say stay at home and save lives.
The virus was traced back to this now closed seafood and meat market, but tests have so far failed to isolate a source. As of this morning, there have been 571 cases confirmed by the Chinese government and 17 people are reported to have died of this new strain of respiratory illness. We're working very closely with China and other countries, and we think it's going to have a very good ending for us, so uh, that I can assure you. At the conference today, they gave the virus a name, COVID-19, coronavirus disease. This is the worst public health crisis for a generation. To keep new cases from entering our shores, we will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. National Olympic Committee that the view of athletics was to postpone the games. The latest from the hospital is that the Prime Minister remains in intensive care where his condition is improving. Death is a reality in this situation, and we're there for people when the, the sometimes sadly inevitable uh, happens.
So over the last year or so, um, I, my life changed in a way that I didn't expect it to, in that uh, most of my time is spent online as, as it was before, but uh, that only got compounded, what with classes going all online and then still having to do what I was doing before, the fact that most of the games that I play are online, often online multiplayer. Um, so as a result, I went from spending, you know, four or five hours on a machine at a time, you know, for through a day, to a whole lot more than that. Some days, as it as it has been over the last year, I've spent twelve to sixteen on a on a machine or more, with the uh, introduction of every uh, every class being online. So. As a result, I've had to turn to things like games and, you know, digital social interaction as opposed to real social interaction, which I didn't expect was going to be, you know, all that much for me or all that much of a problem. But it did turn into something where I needed something else. So it came into the, the point where I figured I may as well use some of that time to be productive and create environments, you know, digital as they may be you know, socially distanced as they might be. In a way, it would be sort of a, a uh, taste of nature when you can't get it, or there are so many conditions and stipulations to getting it. And so uh, I just started spending more and more time making these uh, small, simple, yet, yet uh, interesting natural environments. And it helped me get through it, you know, sort of island, sort of like an island escape. You know, you can't go very far. You, you're suggest it's suggested you don't leave the house. So, that for me, this was the second best thing. You know, it, without leaving the house, in a way, I'm leaving the house. But that might just be me. change life as we know it. Chinese health authorities are still working to identify the virus behind a pneumonia outbreak in the central city of Wuhan. At least 59 people are believed to have been sickened by the new virus. Stay at home. Stay home. Stay safe. Quite simply, stay at home. Sports on high alert, screening passengers for symptoms of a deadly new virus. I'm very concerned. Now that you brought it to my attention, I'll stay away from most people wearing masks. States soon start closing schools and announcing stay-at-home orders. The U.S. didn't confirm its first coronavirus case until January 21st, though we know now it's possible Today, the virus could have been spreading as early as December 2019. In the United States. By the time the White House partially banned travel from China, infection levels start to explode all over COVID the world. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. We will be suspending all travel from Europe. Maybe I'm immune. I don't know. But don't let it dominate your life. Cases start climbing once again as we approach the election. The CDC also starts recommending face masks with more infection. It wasn't the first time he downplayed the seriousness of the virus. One person coming in from China. Into the fall, two major milestones. The U.S. hits 200,000 COVID deaths. Across the world, over a million have lost their lives. Isolation. It's something that every human experiences on this earth. Even before this pandemic, I knew many friends and family members that felt isolated from the world, from their friends, and even from themselves. I started to realize that when things or people or times in your life are not meant for you or are putting you on the wrong path, 
God and the universe are going to filter them out of your life whether you like it or not. It will force you to be isolated. And when you're isolated, it will force you to think about yourself, who you want to be, and how you're going to get there. This can be a tough conversation to have with yourself when you feel like you have a lot of things to change. It makes you want to push everything to tomorrow. Tomorrow is the most dangerous word in our vocabulary because when it's a symbol for hope, tomorrow diminishes the significance of the air that you are breathing right now. Tomorrow masks itself as an escape for those held down by fear, those resistant to change, and it states that you have your whole life to get to where you want to be, and for some, tomorrow lasts forever. Your future rests on the decision for you to conquer right now. You need to be the change you so desperately want. There are an infinite number of ways to succeed, but there is only one way to fail, and that is waiting for tomorrow. Embrace life with open arms. It is giving you everything you need. It is your answer. Your journey is infinite, and so is your potential.